Once the angel had calmed their fears, he then announced the good news. A Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And then a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the herald angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests. This is the way that God works. First, he removes our fears. Then, he fills our lives with his peace. The birth of Jesus enables us to drop those things that we hold on to for security, just like Linus dropped his blanket. I guess there are a lot of different things that people rely on for security. I can, I can think of some, like some people depend on their bank account and their investments. They think that somehow that is going to give them security, but it never removes the fear. You know, if the, if the stock market drops a little bit, they begin to panic. Some people rely on, uh, on their habits, often destructive habits, to kind of help them to handle the, the fear that is inside of them. Without question, we live in an age of fear. Never in my lifetime have the masses of people been so fearful as they are today. The worldwide pandemic has ratcheted fear to an unprecedented level. I uh, came across uh, an article by a man by the name of Dr. Harvey Risch. He is an epidemiologist at Yale University. I, I knew that epidemiology had something to do with diseases, but I didn't know exactly what, what it was, so I looked it up. And I discovered that epidemiology is the area of medicine which deals with the incidence, distribution, and control of disease. And Dr. Risch wrote this. Overall, I'd say we've had a pandemic of fear. And fear has affected almost everybody, whereas the infection has affected relatively few. Now, he wasn't minimizing the disease, and neither am I. It's, it's an awful disease, and for especially those who are seniors and compromised, it, it can be extremely dangerous and even deadly. We know that. And we need to be knowledgeable and we need to be careful. But think of this. While millions of people have been affected by COVID, literally, Billions of people have been infected by fear. And to whom do we turn? To whom do we turn to handle our fears? We turn to God, to God with us. Centuries before the birth of Jesus, the prophet wrote, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, Emmanuel, which means God with us. And God is with us in the person of Jesus who was born that first Christmas. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Peace. And it goes on to say, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, was born in Bethlehem more than 2,000 years ago. Question. Why then... Do most people not experience the peace God planned for us to have? Answer, because they do not have a relationship with Jesus that is real and personal. Or if they do, they've forgotten to focus on Jesus and have started 
looking instead at, at the problems, the issues, the dangers that surround us. We can never know peace until we know Jesus, the Prince of Peace. As long as we try to handle life on our own, we will be lost and fearful. And no wonder, for the Bible says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. If you're on that way, no wonder you feel fear. The same Jesus, whose birth we celebrate at Christmas, died on a cross, was buried, and rose again from the grave. When he did that, Jesus paid the price for all of the wrong things that we have ever done. The Bible says, Christ suffered once for our sins. The righteous, that's Jesus, for the unrighteous, that's all of us, to bring you to God. Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. If you want to experience real peace, trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. You know, if you do something really bad, and you know that it was bad, you generally don't go out and tell people, do you? But perhaps, if you really trust someone, you might tell them about it. You might admit to them what you had done. When we're told to trust Jesus, it means trusting him enough to admit that we are sinners. To say to him, Yes, I've done all that. That's what I've been like. Trusting him means being willing to turn from your sin and turn your life over to God. Believe that Jesus died on the cross for you and rose from the dead so that you, too, can live a new life. By faith, through prayer, ask Jesus to forgive you and take control of your life by his Holy Spirit. Then you will begin to experience the peace that comes to those on whom God's favor rests. Perhaps you have prayed a prayer something like this. Many of you have. Some, perhaps, have never prayed this way. But I invite you to do so now. Just pray silently with me where you are. Father God, I admit that I am a sinner. I want to turn from my sins and turn my life over to you. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me and rose again from the dead so I can live a new life. I trust you as my Savior, and I will follow you as my Lord from this day forward by the help of your Holy Spirit. you have prayed that prayer sincerely, God knows your heart. And at the point where you place your faith in him, some very wonderful things happen. All of your sins are forgiven. You become a child of God in a new and wonderful way. You become a part of God's forever family. You have the promise that he will be with you always. And you have the guarantee of eternal life with him. The Bible says, 
since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible also says that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You can have the peace of God when you have a relationship with the God of peace. You can live a life free from fear because Jesus, Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, is with you by his Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Our Father God, we want to praise you today for being the God that you are. Thank you that you gave Jesus, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you that when we place our faith in you, we can have victory over our fear. We can experience peace in the midst of our troubled and broken world. And now, God, until that time comes, as we celebrate Christmas, may we know the peace that comes only from a relationship with you. Help us to experience it and to share it. In Jesus' name. And we thank you, Jesus, that you have given us your peace. Thank you that you said, and you say again, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. 